so much. Thank you. God bless you. Please be seated. I wonder if I could have encouraged you to go for about five minutes. It would have been fantastic. I've, I've never had fans. So, how are you doing this morning, guys? You all well? It's been a wonderful morning. We've had such a good time together, and uh, it's going to get better. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor Glenn always says he saves the best for last. Truth is, I like coming here last. It's, it's like, you know, when you, you, just about before you send out, you dock at a place where you're safe and you feel loved and cared for. And uh, it's just wonderful. I was sitting in Pastor Glenn's office. There's fruit, there's bagels, there's cream cheese, there's coffee. I feel like a, a million bucks. You know, you know what I mean? Just loved and received. Thank you so much for all you guys do. I appreciate it so very, very much. Today I want to, I, I want to just say that this church is situated, poised for something I believe so much greater than you really understand. Throughout history, there have been opportunities that have been given by the Lord Jesus Christ to his church. When he was looking at Jerusalem, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If only you had known the time of your visitation. If only you had known what this time meant. I wonder if we are aware of what time we're living in. I wonder if we even have a concept of how critical this season is in the world. In 1250, a mighty ruler called Kublai Khan had followed in the footsteps of his grandfather, Genghis Khan, and had conquered right from the, the very coast of China, right across into Eastern Europe, inclusive of India and everything else. It's the greatest kingdom this world has ever seen. The Roman, the Greek, has never come near it. It was absolutely monstrous. They had established themselves and a, a couple of people by the name of Marco Polo and his uncles traveled to Mongolia and became friends with Kublai Khan. History does not tell us whether he became a Christian or not. But what he did do is he sent uh, the Polos back with a, an instruction. The instruction was, I want you to go back to your Pope and I want you to have him send people, missionaries, to make my nation Christian. The greatest kingdom that ever lived, the guy's desire, was that his whole kingdom would be under the Lord Jesus Christ. They came back faithfully to Pope Gregory and issued the, the request. He was too busy with political things. And those who did go were so badly equipped as people that they didn't even last the trip. The greatest opportunity we have ever had is gone. And let me tell you why it's so significant. You might say, well, why are you bringing that up? Because the 60-40 window in which today Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam is established the most difficult to reach was the very area that Kublai Khan had conquered. 
And so today, history would have been totally different, can you imagine, if we had just been able to respond. No one ready. No one ready. What is it going to take for us to be ready? America, you have been ready many times. Today, I owe my Christianity to you. Today, thousands and hundreds of thousands of us have heard the gospel because you were ready to go. You were ready to send. You were ready to pay the price. Today, I'm deeply concerned because Americans don't seem to understand that God has his own purpose. And we live in our, our personal purposes and we miss his. 1945, at the end of the Second World War, the Japanese emperor went to MacArthur and he handed him his sword. Now you must understand, in their culture and in their religion, at that time, the emperor was God. And when he submitted himself to MacArthur, he said, I am inviting you. Your God will be our God. Your culture will be our culture. The church was not ready. There was such a weak response that Japan never got near being evangelized for the Lord Jesus Christ. It would have been a clean sweep. Everybody would have received because that's how they are. Today, we're battling to get into Japan. Again, history would have been different. I personally believe you. you're living at a time, people keep saying that America's in deep trouble. I, I personally believe that Americans have the ability to rise again. I believe that the sleeping giant is able to get up. I really believe that they are ready to do what they want to do. I really believe that they just need to be given an understanding of how important the purpose is. That this is our day. You say, how can you say that? I have never seen so many people being sent from overseas to you. God is trying to tell you. God is trying to stir you. And harvest time, I'm going to tell you something. To whom much has been given, much will be required. You have some of the best teachers. You have one of the best churches on earth right here that you're a part of. They prepare you. They train you. They equip you. They do their very best. You will struggle to find the quality of training and equipping that this church does. This is top draw stuff. And so if anybody needs to hear this message, it's you today. The Bible makes it plain in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. And God's eternal purpose was to, through His Son Jesus Christ, release a church that was going to demonstrate to the principalities and powers in heavenly places His, His incredible mystery that in them the finished work of Jesus would be shown through lives, not one man, but now millions of men and women. That the little Christs, Christians, would be released everywhere, not one man, but a whole body of people all over the world, released to change the world, to drive back darkness. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that He might destroy the works of the evil one. He came to seek and to save the lost. That was his purpose. We often quote Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for good. To them that love God and what? According his purposes. I wonder if all things work together for good for everybody. I believe they work together for good to those who love him and are called according to His purposes. When our lives are aligned with His, 
a unique situation becomes apparent. Suddenly you step out of living natural lives and you step into a flow of the supernatural. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you and I walk according to the purposes of God, then those purposes release a grace which is above the normal. So I've watched people who have, have walked in an unbelievable grace, unbelievable power. I remember it's at 19... 86, um, 86, 86, I think it was 86. Reinhard Bonnke was speaking in a Harare, uh, Zimbabwe. And there was a man that was with him called Brother Alexander. Brother Alexander came from the Congo. He was a man that had got gloriously saved by the power of God. A black African man. Pastor Glenn, this man with a bicycle planted personally 1,000 churches in the Congo. 1,000 churches. He was a, an ignorant man in the sense of being able to read. He was illiterate. And he taught himself to read the Bible. And when he opened the Bible, he stood up in front of all these massive men and women of God, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and, and Benson Idahosa and many, many people. He stood up and he said, I'm not like all these men. I'm just a very simple man. He said, but what I have found is that when you give God your life, then the power of God follows you wherever you go. Then God does things that are unbelievable. I have raised the dead. I've healed the sick. I've seen the blind see. Wherever I go, God is with me. It's when we line up. It's when we line up. Many of us are waiting for God to come and visit us in our homes. Come and do something for us, Lord. Convince us that you're with us. He's already with you. He's already told you. Seek ye. There's an, un an unusual supply that comes to people that don't seek their kingdom, but seek God's. God looks after us in a, an unusual way. If you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added unto you. You'll have more than enough. David, after he had fulfilled the purposes of of God for his generation lay down and slept. David had one purpose. It was to make God famous. That the knowledge of God would be throughout his empire. That he was a king that always honored and glorified his God. That made, he made, he set up, he strategized for God to always be amongst his people. He didn't build the temple. He supplied it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, so many of us have missed the reason for being. We, we live to, to raise families. We live to, to accomplish great things in the business arena. We live to get enough to buy houses and cars and land or whatever we're trying to do. Nothing wrong with, with making sure your family is looked after. Nothing wrong with making sure that you, you, you care for everybody. But I want to tell you one day we are going to stand in front of him. You're going to look at him in the eyes. He's going to ask us a question. What did you do? You see, his response to us is going to be not well thought, thou good and faithful servant. Not well dreamt. Not well discussed. Not well desired. Well what? Done. He's going to look 
for what we've done. Well, Lord, I was, I was a good, I was a good uh, you know, member of the church. I never missed a Sunday. Hold on, that not done anything. You were just present. If that's your Christianity, you've misunderstood it. This is not Christianity, that's a club. If, if all you do is come to a place where you're entertained, because it's only entertainment if it does not transform into function. It's only fun, it, when it becomes function, it's because you have been equipped and you go. This church extends itself to no end to equip the saints. That's its call. That's what it does. But equipping without us going or sending people is fruitless. There is a world out there dying. Right now, right now, as I'm talking, we need to be people that understand we have the capacity to make unbelievable impact on this earth. You've got to understand that to whom much has been given, much will be required. I'm not talking to you like a guest speaker today. I'm not a guest speaker. I've been invited to be part of the family. I accept it. <laughs> so I can say what I want. Because the beautiful thing is, I can go afterwards. <laughs> I want to say something to you. I want to say this. If you have not strategized as an individual or as a family, or as a business, if you have not strategized as to how to reach the broken, the lost, those who are bound by darkness, if you do not strategize individually, it is not the church's duty. It's our duty. It is our duty to get on the streets and influence the realm in which God has called us. Even more than that, it's our duty to make plans to go beyond the borders of our nation, beyond the borders of our state, beyond the borders of our city. In the mind of God, the whole concept of going is from city to state to nations. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. That has not been fulfilled. Thailand, 0.4% of Thailand names the name of Jesus. 0.4. I want to tell you something. It is ready, it is ripe for people that have been equipped like you to come and do something. You say, I, I don't know what I'd do. Well, I can tell you what to do. Southeast Asia, I want to tell you, is hungry. We have to. My wife and I have realized we have to prepare a place to train hundreds of, of leaders for the future. Because when the revival hits, we're going to need people who are going to be able to care for them, train them, and equip them. We've already looked ahead. God has already told me, why would God take me from South Africa and stick me in Thailand? He already told me. The next great move of God is going to be in the east. And we better be ready to deal with it. I'm planning ahead. He wakes me up at night. I, I dreamt Pastor Glenn the other night. I went to sleep. And he, he gave me a full picture of me preparing harvesters. He said, you've got to prepare a course called Harvesters. He, throughout my dream, he gave me step after step after step of how to prepare like an army who would be ready to go. God's not doing that because he's playing games. He's wanting us to move. 
And today I come to you with the, with the word of the Lord. And I'm saying to you, I'm telling you, you cannot go home again and say, I've done my thing. I've been to church. You've got to know that in one way or another, you must be involved. So, well, brother, I don't have much to give. You want me to show you who has not got much to give? You want me to take you to people who really are poor? Simple things can change lives forever. One day, we, we, were, we were making a meal for, there, there were like eight couples coming to our house. We're going to have a lovely time of fellowship, what Christians like doing. Three couples phoned and said, we can't make it. We've got chickens coming out of our ears, you know, baked potatoes, vegetables, the whole deal. Yeah, we, I mean, how do you, on the last minute, phone and say, I can't come? Six people. And we look at each other and suddenly it dawned on us that maybe God's in this. What does that mean? Why don't we just cut up these, these chickens and make little packages? I couldn't believe how many packages we made. We like pigs the way we eat. I mean, tons of little packages in aluminum foil. Not aluminum foil. Aluminium. <laughs> Why do you Americans always mess up the English? <laughs> you even spell wrong. Color. C-O-L-O-U-R. <laughs> so... We package these little things and we get in the car and we head out to the poorest place that we can find. We drive to the corner of our city, a place where there's a hill and these homeless people live on the top there. So we drive down the road and the first thing that we see is a man chasing a woman in the back alleys. So we jump out, sort that out. I mean, now it's like this is hell for some people. And we're sitting in the comfort of our home. And there are women here running away from men. Uh, you know, we, we've done just a little bit of good. I wonder what else is coming. We go up to the top. We get there, man. Here, I'm, I, it's just a stinking mess. Black plastic is their home. I'm talking about it's really cold. It's June, July. It's our winter. Freezing. And I pull up by one of these sh little shelters and I hear the worst cough I've ever heard on a kid. <coughs> I thought, what is that? And the mother emerged from this smoke-filled plastic. She looked at us. I, I spoke to her in her language. I said, good evening, we've come to give you food. Tears just started to pour down her eyes. She said, I prayed to Jesus today. I said, Jesus, if you don't bring food for my children today, they're going to die. I know my child is going to die. We have not had food for weeks. We gave, we gave her this packet of chicken with stuff, still hot. She fell on her knees. And she put her hands in the air. And she just said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I was very young in the Lord, I was listening to a man preach and he read out of Matthew chapter 9. And he said this, Jesus looked upon the crowds and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he said the fields are white 
unto harvest. Don't say there's still four months to the harvest. Don't say that, that there's time. Don't lie to yourself. The fields are ripe unto harvest. Pray he therefore, what? The Lord of the harvest. That he thrusts out workers. Ekbalo throws workers into the harvest field. Get them out of Jerusalem. Cause a persecution. Where do they go to? Judea, Samaria. If we won't move, he'll make us move. Do you want that America? We don't want to, God to make us be who we are. You say, I wonder who this is for. It's for you. Now listen very well. Point your finger at yourself. This is for you. You must do something from today. Start a fund. Open an account. Get on your knees. Pick a nation. Pick a people. Cry out to God for them for the rest of your life. Say, God, when I'm praying, tell me what I can do. Prepare yourself. Create leave time. Create time for leave so you can travel and go and feel. You will never be the same again. Young people, I'm telling you, living in the lap of luxury is no good for you. If it's not mixed with dwelling amongst the poor, it's no good for you. You lose perspective. You've got to mix with a kid that knows what it is like to, for most of their life not to have food on the table. You've got to know what it's like because you will forever change the way you live life. I do what I do because I've been where I've been. I've lived with death. I've lived with poverty. I've lived with constant change. I've lived with crisis. It doesn't change if we don't do something. Here am I. Who can I send, he says. Send me. Send me. What about my business? Stop. Stop. Link into his purpose. Link into his purpose. His purpose is the prison, the ones in prison, the ones who have no clothes. The ones who are going to hell, that's his purpose. We're going to have to answer this point. Believe me. Arrogance is dangerous at this point. How can I go? Pray. Prepare plan. Let God take you to some people. Go and find old age homes where the kids have dumped their parents. And go and give them some hope. Go and love them. Do their hair. Do their nails. Just love them into the kingdom. Go where you're gifted. I'm gifted amongst the rough and ready. I like going to places where not many people like to go. That's my gift. They understand my language. They understand my face. You, you know what I mean? I come from there. I understand black people. I've grown up with them. I just preached in a black church this last weekend. Man, we had glory. I like the way they dance. I like the way they jump. 
Man, I tell you, I just get revved up. I love it when I'm a, hit a point and somebody jumps out of the chair and goes, whoa! I mean, I had people jumping up all over the place. Say that! Preach it, brother! Flip. I wish somebody would do it here. Do it, man. Just get up. Don't even. I got a hold of James Lilly's church. And I said, that's it. This group I'm going to teach you. I'll do a father's house. I said, when something hits you, it's a new truth. Get out of your chair or put your hand up. Do something. It's fantastic. They were popping up all over the place. <laughs> You've got to find where you fit. You've got to find where you dream. Who do you care about? It might be a revelation. Maybe you care about nobody. Maybe you never think about anybody else but yourself. My advice, hit the floor. Cry out until his heart breaks your heart. Why do you think I live such a weird life? You think I've got a problem with my wife and da daughter? I love them passionately. Every night that I'm away from them, when I close that door in the hotel, I know what I'm doing. I'm paying a price. I don't do that to try and put you on a guilt trip. I'm telling you, I know what it's costing. My wife and I look at each other on Skype and we have to say to each other, we've got to be strong. We've got to be strong. We've been called to this. We have no choice. If we won't go, who will? A lady came to me the other night. She says, I, I have a prophetic word. I don't know what it means. She says, the Lord says you've got beautiful feet. I said, I know exactly what that means. How beautiful are the feet of them who bring good news. I'm closing. And you will never allow, be allowed to forget that I was in your face. You cannot say I was not told. I've done it with all the love in my heart. I've done it because I believe in this church probably more than I believe in any other church on earth. I believe if anybody's going to do it, you will. I believe you are the sleeping giant. I believe if just one of you got up and said, that's it. I'm going to make a difference. That you carry so much in this place that hundreds upon hundreds would be touched if you would just go where God tells you to go. If you'll do what God told you to do. I'm calling you back to your original purpose, which is His purpose which is the reason he sent his son, so that none should perish. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? You and your family make up your mind. You by yourself make up your mind. Discuss this. Plan this. And do not stop praying for the group that God has shown you. May the Lord bless you. Put your hand up to receive. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for the work of the Holy Ghost to so touch every one of us that, Lord, we will never again just be living some form of religion, but that we will live true Christianity, that we would be willing to go where you tell us to go 
so that people would look at us and see that we are unusual people. Maybe even ignorant and unlearned people, but that we've been with Jesus. That they would see Jesus on us. I want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you it's a church that is serious about its mandate. Lord, make the people that serious. Start to do miracles in this place. Not so we can come and look at them, but that we can export them. Take them out onto the streets. Not show. Not show stuff. But serious light breaking darkness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I bless you, church. Rise to your calling in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you. Come on, all of us just rise up. We're going to sing, Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you. There is breakthrough in your presence. There is joy, unspeakable joy in your presence. Oh, there is strength in your presence, God. Oh, yes, Jesus, Jesus.